Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna give you a master class on how to develop the proper racket drop. Extremely important video. Let's get started. Before we get started, you know what we gotta do. B2 is working hard for those likes. My buddy B2 is already working hard. So if you like to have a great serve and you love B2, give this video a like right off the bat. All right, let's get into this lesson. So first of all, let's talk about what the racket drop is and why it's so extremely important and what are the things we're doing wrong that's keeping us from having an awesome racket drop. So the racket drop is really, I think at the recreational level, the most important part of the serve to try and master and the one that is messed up or botched the most. And that's when the pros are coming here, you're working on your serve, you're coming to about right here, and then you start to come behind your back here. That what, what many people, which is not really a great tennis tip when you think about it, you know, that scratch your back position, which is kind of taught in, in beginner tennis. So you see the pros come here, and they don't actually scratch their back. Once they're coming back behind their head, it's full steam ahead. So it's got a nice rhythm into it. So that's the first mistake I see people make. I see lots of hitches in the back, okay? So when people come to do the racket drop, many people will actually stop back there, develop a hitch, so they'll come here, scratch their back, and then hit their serve. And you don't want to do that. You want to be flowing. It's kind of like a lasso kind of move. It's a flow. It's nonstop. It, it's, it's a rhythm through the racket drop is what you want. That's what, that's what the pros are doing. So the first thing I recommend that you do is either get a sock, get yourself a sock or even better than that, Go and get yourself a serve master. Go to servemaster.com. My friend Lisa Dotson makes these. It's really cool. You can even see, I'm a lefty, so you can see the L for the grip, righty. So it, it right away also teaches you how to have the proper continental grip, where to put your, your hand here. And then it's gonna teach you, especially if you get the one with the three balls on it, it's gonna teach you, I would recommend start out with the one ball, maybe the two ball, uh, but this weight is going to teach you how to keep the flow going. You see how the, this is not stopping? And many players, even though this looks pretty easy for me, many players I give this to really, really struggle with this and they start to hit themselves back here because they're not used to going in a continuous flow. So they'll whack themselves in the back here. You want to be going in a continuous flow when you're doing this. So this is a great tool to have to start to master that racket drop. Okay, so that will help you get rid of stopping. Now, another thing that people do when they're trying to develop a racket drop is they hold their hand too tight. It doesn't have anything really to do with flexibility. Not that I, I don't certainly don't have a racket drop like Novak Djokovic, but I have a pretty good racket drop. Novak Djokovic is incredibly flexible, so his racket drop goes really, really deep. You don't need to go as deep as Novak Djokovic to have a great serve. But you can't be tight in your wrist. Okay, and I see that a lot of people do this. When they come here, they're extremely tight in their hand. And so it's gonna basically keep the racket up and then they go and they're serving. They have a very shallow racket drop because their arm and their hand is tight. You wanna be extremely loose. I like to call this the dangle. You want, you want to basically let this racket have a mind of its own. You want the racket to almost control your moves. You see how we're, the racket is basically moving itself? So I'm holding it really low. So just kind of do this. Hold the racket in your fingertips. And what you want to do is think about just with you doing a little bit of a push back, laying the momentum flow, and then let the racket kind of fall here. And as you see the racket fall, and you start to feel it fall towards the bottom of the range of motion, then what you want to do is you want to come out here, boom, and hit it. Okay, you want to keep that going. Don't let the racket 
stop. That's the key. Once you feel it wants to drop, then you got to lasso out of it. And so holding it really, really loose and laying the racket, what I call dangle, I call this the dangle move, just let it fall. And just by letting it fall and having the racket butt go to the sky like that, we'll have a little laser shooting out here. So have the laser go there. That's what you want. You want it to go up to the sky. That will get you a nice deep racket drop and you don't need to be flexible. Okay, I am one of the least flexible people that I know, but it doesn't take flexibility to actually have a deep racket drop. All you need to be able to do, if, I'm pretty sure anybody can basically take this, put the racket in their two fingers, and have the racket face the sky. If you can do that, you can have a pretty good deep racket drop. It doesn't take a lot of flexibility like some coaches say to have an amazing racket drop. It just doesn't. It just takes allowing your hand to relax and let it fall out. And then once you feel it coming in this position, you always want to be a step ahead mentally. Once you feel it start to fall, then you got to basically throw it, throw it up there. I like to call that either moving into the sprinkler because I picture my elbow coming around like a sprinkler and then going up, or I like to call it going into the hatchet move where you're coming here and then you're starting to throw up on edge. Okay, so that will help you get rid of that tightness in your hand when you're thinking about that. The next thing and the biggest thing that we need to fix on the racket drop, this is probably the hardest one, okay? There's four things you need to fix, fix on a racket drop. And number three is the toughest. And that is to stop the dreaded pizza move where your racket face goes up to the sky. Now, number one, your grip can basically almost force this. So if you are in a frying pan grip, it's almost impossible to have a proper racket drop. You're basically going to come back here, flop the racket back, and then serve. And this is going to have you only hitting flat serves, and it's going to force you to dink your second serve. So you got to have the right grip. Okay, you have to have that continental grip, which is basically shaking hands to the racket, putting the webbing of your hands right in there and running it down and grabbing. You want to basically be able to take the edge of your racket and hit it forward into something like I'm taking it to the camera right now. That's extremely important, okay? That grip is gonna help you come back on edge and get there. But I've even seen people with the correct grip Sometimes they change the grip in the middle of it. I call that a slip grip. And sometimes even with the uh, correct grip, they still manage to come here and do this. So what I like to coach students to do is to really pay attention to their thumbnail. Because if your thumbnail starts to go away from you, like right now I can't see the thumbnail, it's kind of facing up to the sky, that's gonna put me in that frying pan, pizza move, waiter tray, whatever you want to call it. But if I can keep my eyes on my thumbnail right here, then this is going to allow me to be in the proper professional type served. So I like to do lots of shadow swings to where I watch myself in the beginning or I'll have my students do that because I know I do it right at this point. So what I like to do is basically have my students say, hey, follow your thumbnail, look at it. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yes, you can. Now as you're coming by your ear here, keep looking at it. Now go up and out. Now you're hitting the tennis ball. Now you start pronating out of the way. Now I can no longer see my thumbnail and then you relax around. Okay, so do that a bunch of times. I would say, you know, this is something where like, yeah, I know I had that frying pan grip. Do at least 30 reps. Now that sounds like a lot, 30 reps, but that's literally gonna take you less than two minutes. Just 30 reps, nice and easy, shadow swings, taking a look at it. Just watching that so you really develop that muscle memory. Okay, now we're almost there to the perfect racket drop. The last thing, and this is just a timing issue if you want to max out on power. And I learned this from a Rick Macy presentation, which really made me think about it. I'm like, oh, I never really thought about that. But he says a lot of people, even some really good players, I think Venus Williams uh, even did this for a while. I'm not, I think she probably even still does. I don't think she ever got rid of this habit. So she could have had even better serve. Chris Everett really sticks out in my mind. Chris Everett, when she was playing, she would basically bring her racket drop as she bent her legs down. So as she's coming 
back, she basically would have a racket already behind her head. So when you do that, when you bring your racket drop back here early, now you're not going to be able to hit a very big serve. You're going to come here, you're there too early, then you're hitting. The great servers wait. They build a hesitation in their serve, so then when they go and they bring all that racket speed in the ball, they're maxing out on their power. So the leg drive, okay, the legs, what is a leg drive? The leg drive is when you're, you're bent to, as far as you're going to bend, you don't need to bend way down. You want to be comfortable with your knee bend. You don't have to exaggerate your knee bend. But when your knees bend and then they start to extend up, see how I just did that? That's when I want to go into my racket drop, okay? So the legs getting ready to explode up are going to dictate the racket drop. Now you can do this in a couple different spots in your serve, okay? The easiest for me is just to coach people to go in Andy Roddick style. So starting here, starting this position, I have players to start in this position Get used to throwing the ball up. See when the ball stops at the top. When the ball stops at the top, see as I go to toss, I'm gonna bend in my toss. I'm gonna bend my legs into my toss. And then as I see that ball stop, then I'm gonna go with my racket. And I'm going to push my legs up after the ball. See, like this. So it stops and then go. And just by doing that, you see that? That was a pretty big serve. I'm not warmed up. I didn't jump, but because I just thought about the tip, it actually helped my serve. Now, if you want to do more of a flow, you like to say, well, I want to serve like Fetter. So you want to come down here. Now you got to build the hesitation down here. Novak Djokovic does this too. He holds the racket here for a second, and then as he develops his serve, then he comes back here and it's full steam ahead. Okay, so let's think about, let's review how you want to get that perfect racket drop. First of all, you got to flow. You can't, you can't have a hitch back here. So I recommend that you get yourself a sock and put some tennis balls in it, or even better yet, you get yourself a serve master and you learn how to flow into your serve, okay? You learn how to keep this thing continuous and going. That's number one. Number two is your hand can get tight. So think about holding the racket in your fingers and laying the racket dangle this way to where you see this part of the racket facing the ground, the racket butt facing up to the sky. Then you'll have a deep enough racket drop. So you got to loosen up your hand. Number three is you want to get rid of the pizza move. So you got to have the correct grip and you got to make sure you're doing the follow the thumbnail drill. And number four is the timing of your racket drop with your leg drive. If you do those four things and you just do them over and over again, practice over and over again, you're going to develop an awesome racket drop, which is going to help you serve more like the pros. So if you like this video, give this video a like. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel. And if you want to keep improving your serve, I got a free serve course for you called Serving A to Z. So make sure that you click up here in the card section, click right there, and you'll get that free Serving A to Z course and go in the description box. Also, I want to talk about something cool that's coming up called Tennis Con 6. So just by getting my free serve course, it's going to put you on my VIP list so you'll be notified about Tennis Con 6. This is where I have all the best instructors in the world. So if you love online instruction, you probably know Essential Tennis and Racket Flex and Tennis Evolution, Jeff Saldenstein and online tennis instruction and top tennis training. Pretty much anybody you can think of is part of Tennis Con 6. Gigi Fernandez, 17 time Grand Slam champion. They're all part of Tennis Con 6. So that's why you want to get on my email list if you're not there yet because that's where we really let people know that they can be part of this event where all the instructors make it an incredible piece of instruction for you and then you can learn different cool stuff every day of the conference. And the conference gives you free 48 hour uh, access to watch all the videos. So it's really cool. Let's see if B2 will chase down another ball. Let's see, is he still awake? Is he still paying attention? He absolutely is. And we'll see you guys on the next video.